on guys i'm steve welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video if it's your first time stopping by the channel hit that subscribe button trust me you won't regret it if you're a returning subscriber as always guys welcome back and i do appreciate the support guys this story broke uh late yesterday and it's out of uh california shout out cali and uh it's a strange case with this and it seems like it has a, a domestic uh background with it now i'm gonna read you this small excerpt because this is a lot right here guys it says a man you see the picture up here a man a woman and an infant are dead while another child is hospitalized in a horrific homicide investigation that linked through three separate crime scenes in southern california it began with the discovery of two children on a 405 freeway in culver city monday morning then a short time later a fatal single car crash in redondo beach finally the body of a man believed to be stabbed to death was found in an upscale apartment building in woodland hills take a look at this video and we'll come back take a look now at 11 three deadly crime scenes in three cities more than 30 miles apart and tonight police say they are all connected part of one big investigation Good evening, everyone. I'm Colleen Williams. This all started overnight when the body of an infant girl was found on the 405 freeway. Also discovered a young girl who is now being treated for moderate injuries. And tonight, the NBC4i team has confirmed both children are connected to a deadly crash in Redondo Beach and a murder in Woodland Hills. NBC4's Darsha Phillips live right now in Woodland Hills with more on the investigation. Darsha. Colleen, the deadly chain of events is believed to have started here at the Montecito Apartments in Woodland Hills with the murder of a man in his 30s. But it was the last piece of the gruesome puzzle that police put together, and that's because the body of that man lay undiscovered possibly for hours until neighbors woke up and saw blood pooling out of the apartment. Two children found on the 405 around 4.30 Monday morning. An infant who died on the side of the freeway and a nine-year-old girl with minor injuries. Then around 5 a.m., a driver in a black Porsche believed to be related to the children slammed into a tree on PCH in Redondo Beach and was killed. As police begin to thread the connections, another discovery linked to these two scenes, this time at the Montecito Apartments in Woodland Hills, where it appears these gruesome events were set into motion. I woke up in the middle of the night at around like 3, 3.40 a.m. to screaming and a commotion. This woman who did not want her name to be used says her neighbors had been fighting last night. The man and woman lived next to her with their nine-year-old daughter and new baby. This morning I was getting up to go to work and I left and I walk out our front door and they're immediately to the left of us and I see their front door wide open and blood coming from their apartment all the way into the hallway to the elevator. I see blood on the walls. She calls her dad to check on the people in the apartment, telling him she heard screaming last night. I saw blood coming. You know, there was blood in the apartment. Uh, like I said, the door was wide open and um, I called 911 and said there, there's something going on here. I saw two legs sticking out, you know, from the kitchen area. Her father says he couldn't believe what he was seeing. The EMTs told me over the phone to go in and check on the body, and I did. So I stepped over a bunch of blood and stuff and checked on the body, and um, uh, he was deceased. He says the man was face down. I didn't see any weapons, no, but there was a lot of blood, and uh, you know the apartment was in disarray, basically. So. Things were knocked over, a lot of trash everywhere. And Police tell NBC4's I-Team the children on the 405 and the driver who was killed in Redondo Beach are connected to this murder scene in Woodland Hills, but have not said how. Neighbors believe they are the family who lived here. I just see the, the daughter that she used to play with my, with my daughter at the pool during summer. Neighbors say the family kept to themselves, but at night, especially in the past few months, fighting, screaming, and commotion could be heard coming from their unit. It's like literally so tragic. I don't even know. I feel so bad for that little girl and that poor baby. The nine-year-old girl, the only survivor, losing so much in the most unimaginable way. The trauma that that poor nine-year-old girl must have gone through is, is uh, absolutely horrific. I wish I knew what happened, how it got to that point. 
And that is certainly what police are going to try to figure out how this got to such a tragic point. Now, neighbors say that the family lived here for more than a year, but again, kept to themselves, rarely saying hi to anyone. Reporting live tonight from Woodland Hills, I'm Darsha Phillips, NBC4 News. All right, guys, that's the sad news, and I'm going to be honest with you. Now, you know I'm not religious, but I do respect religion. And I'm going to tell you something. This type of stuff right here happens when you turn your face or your shoulders to God. Whether it's uh, outside of, uh, you know, dealing with religion or what you feel inside. Or dealing with universal law. Once you go opposite of that, stuff like this happens. And you're starting to see the unraveling of the very fabric of the being of what makes this country what it is. It's like the more you look, not having common sense is more common. People are getting shot. They're leaving body parts all over the place. Human remains are being found. People are killing their own children. You see a lot of stuff out here. People are running up and just attacking people, sometimes for no reason. Excuse me. Oh, my God. We are losing it. We are losing ourselves. This is heartbreaking. The only survivor is the, uh, what is this? She was an eight-year-old girl. Five-month-old baby found on the highway, dead. Woman rides off the road. She dies. Man stabbed to death. His own damn kitchen. Blood pooling out of the house. At what point is enough enough? Seems like we don't have things affect us until they affect us. But there's stuff going on all around us. One of my questions is the lady says she heard them fighting and screaming and all this stuff. Why she didn't call the cops? Why she didn't call the cops? But then again, it's not her fault because sometimes you call the cops, you make yourself enemies of people that you're trying to save. I've done that before too. You know what I'm saying? In the apartment I was at, called the cops. They jumped on me, got mad at me. After he was beating the hell out of him. But anyway, listen. You had to take an account. This is like one of those horror movies. And you're starting to see this more and more. But there's no survivors at the end. Now, luckily, this little girl, the nine-year-old girl, is alive. And they say they think she's a witness. Can you imagine the amount of mental rehab and PTSD that that young lady suffered? That baby. Why is a five or six month old baby dead on the side of the damn freeway for somebody to come along and see that with the sister sitting there in anguish and in, in pain? How did they get out there? Number one. It's like when people go left, they go all the way left. You get a simple problem of going through a dilemma. No type of motherly instinct or no type of uh, responsibility to those around you that can't care for themselves. So you just dump these kids off because you knew you was going to take your own life. And that's why I think she did it. Ah, don't matter. I'm dying tonight anyway. Think about it. Come down off that adrenaline high and I don't know what this is about. He could have been the asshole beating the hell out of her. But either way, everybody lost, including the little girl that lived. Lost her mother or father. Sister, she the last one left. Bunch of people in your life, and all of a sudden they're gone. That does a lot to you. It does a lot to you. It's like picking you up from one place you were born and raised at, or, or whatever you know, and dropping you off somewhere else strange. They don't know where the family is, who's next to kin. It's a process they're going to go through. And it has a mental toll on this little girl. And that's the part that's sad. Think about this. This whole situation, they said these people stayed to themselves and really didn't talk to anybody. Nobody knows if they were suffering in silence or, or, or one, one or both of them, they was going through something, but evidently they were. My thing is this, man. I, I, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you can't get out. Yes, you can. To a degree, you can get out. Especially if you're a woman with kids, they'll defend you. What goes on to the point where it comes to this, where you are willing to hurt yourself, to hurt somebody else, and then hurt those that are innocent. 
you know this little girl witnessed this stuff. They said they think she's a witness, but you know, they're not going to ask her no questions right now. They're going to let her calm down. She ain't like an adult. But I mean, stories like this break my heart. And it's like the demons are out here winning. And the ones that are supposed to be fighting a good fight just stand there and do nothing or say nothing. I mean, this is deep. Three separate crime uh, scenes. One with a dead baby. One with a dead man in his 30s. And one with a woman that apparently went off the road and killed herself and hit a tree. Make it make sense. At what point does life become precious? At what point does living for your children mean everything to you? At what point of being a man and governing and trying to set a good example for those that are around you? Now, I don't know the situation, but somebody failed and it caused a chain reaction that left three people dead and one of them is a fucking baby. And a little nine-year-old girl might, be, might as well be dead, too, because everything she knows is gone. And I don't mean that literally. You know what I'm saying. This story completely breaks my heart. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Investigators releasing new details into the death of a baby on the 405 freeway. Police say the primary suspect is to believe the mother, Danielle Johnson. She's suspected of killing her husband, 29-year-old Jalen Cheney, in Woodland Hills before taking off with her two young daughters. The CHP believes the children fell out or were thrown out of the moving car. The other child, a 9-year-old, was injured. Johnson later died after crashing in Redondo Beach.